that feeling that life was just unfulfilling more that you try to find it the more that you got to witness the bush that you done been in all the pain you done went through i'm grateful for being here but sometime it made me resentful We got Showtime, you know, in the building, man. You know, my brother, man, friend of, how long been friends? Probably about. It's been a while, man. Been a while. 15, what? 10, 15, 10, 15 years. years. Yep, yep, yep. It's been a while. All right, all right. So, um, you know, so, man, you got our own relationship or whatever. Um, You know, we kind of crossed paths. It was before I started taking pictures, I think. Um, Me and your, who is Monty to you? That's my brother. It's a real brother? Yeah. Okay, so my, me and my team stayed down the street from each other out there on Mary Road, the road. And we've been friends since I was in high school. So that's how I think we kind of crossed paths. So, you know, you grew up in Millersville? I did. All your life? I did. All my life been in Millersville. Okay, 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 okay. So people been knowing, how long you been DJing? Oof. Uh, since, what, 2008? Nine. Yeah, man, I started at the spot called The Bottom. Started from the bottom. Uh, didn't have a name. I just I always had music, a lot of music, and a way to play it real loud. And uh, my partner, Rodney, man, Rodney Harris, he tricked me and the DJing at the bottom, man. He said I was going to play some music for some people playing cards. And, mm. uh, yeah, people start coming in, man. I'm like, man, all these people playing cards. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so it started from there, man. And, uh, yeah, so Rodney got me started DJing uh, outside of what my aunt was having me doing at, you know, kickbacks at the house and whatnot. Rodney so, Harry. Yeah, man, Rodney Harry, man. Okay. Rodney, what's up, homie? What up, Rodney? Okay, so, what, okay, so he got, you got tricked into DJing there. They supposed to been playing card, but what did you get your equipment from? What made you get like? What was you playing the music on? Oh um, man, I had a shoot. I was taking a whole desktop computer, man, into the spot. <laughs> <laughs> what a whole desktop? I was taking a whole desktop, the monitor, <laughs> the, the, the tower. tower, everything, keyboard, and uh, I was just I was hooking it up to a uh, a home stereo system, and then uh, from that man, uh, the first DJ that I really heard and paid it, paid attention to is, is one of my closest friends to this day, man, Too Quick. And um, I heard Too Quick and I said, man, I got I to gotta upgrade. And so what Too Quick had? What kind of stuff he oh, had Too going Quit on? Had the, he had the bagels, he had the, uh, the Surin Vega bottoms, he had the Peavy tops, he had all the nice lights and stuff, man, I didn't have none of that. Uh, so yeah, you know, I went and seen him uh, at, at, the, at the bottom spot I was DJing it. So what the bottom at? What is it? The bottom is the LNS Lounge, aka the bottom. It was that little spot down there where um how can I put it? It's it's right beside the, the Dollar General at the bottom of Hasburg. The little spot in Hasburg. Yeah. Yeah. That little small spot? Well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was yeah. popping back in the day. What, yeah. what year this oh, yeah. was? When, when man, it was? was shoot, early two thousand nine. It was. This was early two thousand, man. Two thousand ten, twelve, fifteen. Now, unfortunately, though, that that spot burned down. And, uh, okay, so okay, okay. Down. So I'm saying, so when you, I know, I know, I know what you're talking about. Now. So when you started DJing, what, like when you got tricked at the party? What year was that? This was. 2008 okay 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 all right okay all right so would you say um so how did your dj thing career i'm gonna say how did your dj career really when did you notice that you you were good at it like at what point um when people started paying me <laughs> yeah um i was just hold up hold up so your first your first gig what was that let's talk about the first man, gig. the first gig can you remember that the, far the, back? The first gig was actually at the bottom. You know? <laughs> okay. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I was doing stuff like at my aunt's house, man. She would have these kickbacks that started ten o'clock in the morning and then end till two o'clock in the morning. You know, literally all day. And it was people all over the yard, man. It was people coming in, people going out. 
and uh, she actually she had to replace the living room floor because people was in there dancing. You know, it's, wow, it was so man. many people, man. And uh, yeah, um, but I can remember um, a partner of mine. He lived in Macon, and it was my very first wedding, and I had the music. I just didn't have the sound and the equipment that I have now. And uh, yeah, he uh, he took a chance with me DJing his wedding, and apparently I did a good job because word of mouth and what's the name DJ Showtime? At I didn't. That point? I didn't have a name at, at that time, man. So I they just said we booking Shamil Simmons. Pretty much. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, <laughs> uh, okay. I remember going to the bottom man, and they had the like the little flyer. And it said DJ Bo. Bo's my nickname. From Bo. Bo. Okay. From, from back in the day, man. That's my childhood nickname. And I saw that, and I was like, man, you know, DJ Bo. I thought it was going. I thought it was somebody else with the same name that was going to be down there. And uh, now nah, uh, the owner of the spot said that it was me. So you didn't know it, you were going to be DJ. Nah, man. I was like, cause I was so naive, man. I was like, man, this man, who is who is DJ Bo? But you know, it worked out. Okay. And then, uh, I got the name Showtime from this drunk guy, actually, and uh, it just stuck. So the drunk guy, he, he, he <laughs> you DJ Showtime, you DJ Showtime. Uh, he, he, something like that. The um, there was a DJ in Putnam. His name was Show Enough, and um, Show Enough didn't show up. Mm. <laughs> and and uh, the guy was like, "Okay, y'all, it's Showtime. It's Showtime." So. I guess, you know, when he said that, it just, it just stuck. Mm. So, showtime. Mm -hmm. That's dope. That's dope. All right. So, you on your first gig in making. Um, all right. So, let's take it back a little bit before all that. What type of childhood did you have? Did you, you know, like, did you ever cut? Because me, I never thought I'd be taking people pictures. You know what I'm saying? So, I never thought that. Uh, not a hobby I had growing up, you know, I never, you know, thought I'd be doing something totally different. So when, you know, growing up, what type of childhood you had? What was your, what did you want to, what was your dream? What did you want to do with your life? But my, my dream, I, I wanted to be a, a pilot in the Marine Corps. I wanted to fly jets. I was just going to say you seem like you want to go to the military, bro. Wanted, Cause you, cause you wanted, like, yeah, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. I wanted to be a pilot. I want to fly. And, um, that didn't happen because of um, I have epilepsy, so a pilot loses his aviator license for life once he has a seizure. Mm, but, um, mm. Yeah, man, pretty much. Uh, I grew up, man, just doing you know regular stuff, man. We was, I was in the skateboard and rollerblading and ATVs and go karts and um, tearing up electronics so I could fix it again. Man, I got plenty. Plenty of trouble about taking the VCR apart and putting it back together. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, man, you gotta be smart to do that, though. Yeah, or cause you like that right now, man. You don't build some stuff now with your own stuff, man. So you gotta be smart or not want to get any trouble. And that's I think that's what it was. I didn't want. <laughs> I got tired of getting in trouble, so I had to put it back together, right? Ain't it funny how <laughs> how stuff you do early on it kind of translate into your yeah, adulthood, definitely. like? Yeah, then it actually benefits you. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. Cause you built a uh, speaker. What is it? What you call it? mobile speaker? Yeah. Uh, steer, uh, DJ. Sound stage. Yeah. Motor sound. Mobile sound stage. Mobile sound stage. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. An average person can do. They had to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to get that built. It, it, it. it still costs that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. you play. You had to pay probably double that. You know, if you had to pay somebody else to do it. Yeah, I'm actually. Uh, I'm in the process of. Uh, Finishing up the patent process, getting that patented, mm. and um, and possibly having it uh, manufactured and mass produced. Mm. Yeah, man, so. that's dope, man. That's dope. That's dope. And you can build it yourself, so you got the blueprint. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. So um, back on the kind of cuts out, kind of went left. What what type of childhood did you have? A good childhood. Oh yeah, my childhood was was amazing, man. Uh, me and my sister, you know, we were real, real close. Uh, my aunt, grandparents. Pops, you know. Uh, unfortunately, my mother was killed, you know, when I was small, so I never had that, you know, that that mother-son bond. I did get it from my aunt, though. Uh, like my aunt, she stepped up, man, and 
you know, she was my aunt and my mom, you know. But uh, yeah, I had a my childhood was pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty fun, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't change nothing. So you wanted to be a pilot, but then when did you know you had epilepsy? You always knew that. Nah, man, I had my first seizure in Baldwin High. Ball went high. You was in what, 19th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade? No, I was in my 12th grade year. 12th grade year. Yeah. You never had a season? Never had a season up until the senior year. ROTC practice. That's right, I had a season. So you were definitely <laughs> heading to the military for sure. You was in ROTC. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. But that, that is true. I mean, that's one of the worst things that could happen to a, you know, is to have a seizure while flying a, flying a plane or any have any type of health right. conditions while flying right. a plane. Yeah, especially something that got, you know, thousands of pounds of bombs strapped to it. Whoa, you know, right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, that would yeah, that wouldn't be good. Right. Okay. Okay. Alright, so uh a lot of people know you at DJ Showtime. Mm -hmm. Um Is it like uh so you deal with a lot of people, but do you feel like people know the real you or they just know like what do you you know, what do you give people? Do you give people like good question because me I give people like the cameraman person yeah yeah I, I've always loved music uh, different types of music different genres old music new music um, I've always had a thing for music and uh, that's one of the things that that keeps me going like the music and and seeing the people dancing and have a good time and that's one of the things that I, I mean I never went to any, any parties or any clubs in school you never went to any party, so you never went out. Nah. You just like music, though. Yeah, I always like music. Uh, I used to get in trouble for playing it so loud in my grandma's house. Uh, but yeah, I never went to uh, any other parties, man. Uh, my uncle, my uncle Calvin, man, he had this. Uh, he had one of those tall JVC component stereos. And I found a way to hook my computer, the TV up to it. I mean, anything that had volume, I hooked it up to that. <laughs> and uh, and I, I just, I just, man, I just pumped it up loud, man. You know, how did, so now you're an amputee. Yes. All right, all right. So I want to know personally, I never, I, I think we talked briefly about it, but now that you, you know, got your prostate leg, how is it, is it better now? Like, are you, are you building that confidence back now? Or are you... You know, how, how's that work? Uh, I have my moments, you know. Uh, some days I, I don't want to be seen. Some days I don't want to be bothered, talk to, I don't want to answer the phone. It's such a, it's such a, a traumatic change. Um, and then the way I lost my leg um, with, with no warning, you know, to go from having two legs to one and a half, you know, is, uh, yeah, it, it, it does a lot to go upstairs, you know, and, uh, but I'm adjusting. Um, so have you met any other amputees, like? Plenty of them. So, of so them. did they help you out, like, talking to them? Um. What's one story that stood stood out to you? Cause I know they told you their story, like how it happened. Nah, not really. It's it's um, most they just say you know keep going, keep your head up. It's not the end of the world type thing. Um, and I appreciate that, you know, uh, because it's not the end of the world. Um, in fact, I am starting to put together a nonprofit organization for amputees who don't have or didn't have the support that I had and uh, cuz I had a lot of support man uh, shout out to the city of Millersville uh, people from surrounding counties other states um, all the people that that, that that supported me and held me up I appreciate you all from the bottom of my heart um, but yeah I'm starting a uh, nonprofit hope that, that we can help somebody, you know, the way that I was helped. So, yeah.
Yeah, so how did people from other state reach out? Did they get that? How did, was it Facebook? What was it? <laughs> uh, Cause Facebook travel now. Yeah, it does. And I also travel. Right, like right, said, right. I've been a DJ, man. I've DJed in South Carolina. I've DJed in Florida. I've DJed in Kentucky. How many of your clients reached out, man? Let's talk about that. Oh man, I, it's so many. I can't. I can't. It was. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was so many. It was so many. Um, but again, you know, to everybody that did reach out, I appreciate them, and and, and I, I can't. I can't repay back that love, and it, you know, I, I just can't. It's. Um, and I'm gonna bring a tear to my eye, man. The way that people. I don't say came to my rescue, but the way people, um, you know, just supported me and, and helped me up uh, through prayer, texts, um, emails, cards, hospital visits, um, seeing me on the streets. Um, I mean, it was just, I'm blessed, man, you know, I'm blessed. Did you, did you have a, a, a experience with God? Did God give you a message? Did he did he touch you? Did he talk to you? Ain't, I'm not even gonna sit up here and lie and say that he did. That I did have a not a near death experience, <laughs> but I'm not a conversation. I'm saying, just saying, like, was it a lit? Like, did you feel like God was showing you something? Do you feel like through your accident or like through you know just in general, like you know? Um, are you even a spiritual person? Are you you know? Do you feel like? Yeah, but I, I I would consider myself a, a spiritual person, not a religious person, but a spiritual person. Um, and I definitely think that there is more to my life personally than what I was doing prior to where I am now. Um, and it was an eye opener, you know. Um, I, I had to call some people and, you know, set my pride aside and I had to apologize to some people because October 2nd, 2022 could have been my last day. Um, so I had to call some people and, you know, and get right, get some things right. Um, Cause like I said, you know, you don't know. So, so anybody that's watching this, I advise you to do the same thing. Uh, just, you know, get it out. Let them know how you really feel. Uh, Everybody don't get that opportunity. Right. So, uh, and they be holding on in their heart and they be wanting to do it. Right. But then, you know, some people get their light taken, they don't have no t chance to do that. Right, you know? right, right, right. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. And then probably put a big brick off your shoulder. It did. It did. It did. Uh, and and most of the people that I talked to, well, I'm not even so most of the people, um, pretty much all the people that I talked to and gotten things straight with, it could have been done so much earlier than that you know and it was so easy to say hey look you know in this situation this happened I wish it would have happened this way for the part that I played in I apologize and they accepted my apology and then they gave me their apology and man that's amazing that's a yeah. blessing man that's a bad we all got things in situations like people like that even our family members all right. type of stuff where right. we can get stuff right talk to them and it, it release stuff out of both parties you know right. um so finally man take us to that night man take take us not even the accident itself but even before that you know that day like what happened how was your day that day did you feel something like how was your day were you having a good day i was i was having a great day man i was uh I was out riding with uh, two of my buddies, and I was headed to uh, a birthday party, and I was making a left turn off of Gordon Highway onto Mount Pleasant. Somebody came up from behind me, and uh, as I was turning, they tried to pass me in front of me, and they ended up T-boning me. Mm. And uh, it pretty much. Hold on, you got T-bone on a bike, motorcycle. That's crazy. Like getting T-bone in a car is worse than though. Get T-bone on a bike. It's basically your body. Yeah. It really. I mean. <laughs> he pretty much. He he pretty much amputated me on the scene. Like I was like he 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 took it off on the scene. Um, 
my leg was attached by a couple pieces of skin. It was uh, twisted all around, like the, the bone had completely snapped. I was laying on my stomach, in one picture, I was laying on my stomach, and a piece of my leg was folded up. You know, it was like like breaking a pencil and putting the two pieces beside each other. That's how my leg and foot was. But, um, yeah. So when the car hit you, what like what was the feeling? Like did you you seen it before it came? Did your life flash before your eye or did you did you like I didn't, I didn't get none of those none of those experiences. Uh it happened so fast. I remember um the initial contact and then um the police report says that it threw my body hundred and seventeen feet and um I remember uh, laying on the ground, and I remember a couple of my buddies had pulled up, and I remember calling out their names. How did they? Oh, they were riding with you? Nah, they um, because I was I was close by. To oh, okay. And once the, this phone started going off, man, and um, and the Millersville Roadblock page. <laughs> They'll do it. Yeah. They man. know everything so, going on. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it didn't take long, and. Uh, and yeah, man. Could you hear them? What they were saying, like? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I heard a couple of them. They were, you know, calling my name. They were telling me to, you know, stay with me, keep your eyes open. Uh, you felt like you were dying, or no? You knew you like. I watch some people interviews and stuff like that about near death experience. They like. Some people say like, you know, they go in and out of consciousness. They like, you know, they can't remember. They blacking out. Like they felt like they were dying, losing blood, getting cold. Yeah, I I did lose a lot of blood. I did. Um, I actually did um, cold while I was in my what, second surgery. I uh, after my second surgery, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, they said that I had uh, I had passed on, man. But you know, miraculously. Did it feel like so? Basically, you like sleep in your mind. You sleep. You didn't dream honest, or nothing? To be honest, man, it just, it really felt like, even back on the scene, you know, when I was laying on the ground, man, uh, it was like I was just surrounded by nothing but blackness. Uh, my grandma said that uh, it sounded like I was in hell, but. Uh, it sounded like you was in hell? <laughs> like you were screaming? Man, my grandma funny, man. Okay, okay, okay. The way, okay, I, okay. The way I, <laughs> I, I described it to her, it said it sounded like she was in hell. I mean, it sounded like I was in hell, but. It was like it, there was no walls, no ceiling, no floor. It was just me and surrounded by blackness. And uh, like you with clothes on, you naked, nah, you I like mean, it just it was just just me, like in blackness. Okay, that's it. So you couldn't see your body or nothing. You just you just knew you was, was in blackness. In, in, in my mind, it was like it was like a dream that I just couldn't wake up from. Was it peaceful or was you like what's going on? I, I, it was like what's going on. Oh, okay. Like I said, it was all black and. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, man, my grandma said it sounded like I was in hell, but, you know, and I told her, I just slapped the devil and told him to send me back. Your grandma do sound like she's pretty <laughs> funny, though. She said, sound like yeah, you, I can see her funny. saying it right now. <laughs> yeah, but, um. So, from, so, how did you, when you went from the, that's on the scene, right? Yeah, that was on the scene. So, then, it, you didn't wake back up at all? Or you woke up in the ambulance? So you um, woke up at the hospital? Um, I was in and out. The last thing I remember is, um. From the scene, the last thing I, I remember, because I was I was awake pretty much for most of up until they put me on the helicopter. You was in and pain or no? Nah, man, that okay. adrenaline is something else, man. Wow. That adrenaline. Um, I was asking, uh, I was asking my boy Andy, man, Andy, what my bike looked like. Andy, am what's I a bike up? look like? <laughs> what, what? Like I said, that adrenaline, man. You know, I was asking about my bike. I was asking about, you know, you know. Um, Am I messed up? I can't feel my leg. What's going on? So I'm somebody see your leg uh, detached basically from your body, and you asking, "Oh, am I all right? Am I bad?" <laughs> yeah. I would probably be like, "No, nah, you good, bro. Everything good. Don't even worry about that." Yeah, man. The, the EMTs that got that man, they said that it was um, that it was something that they had never seen. They had never seen somebody so calm and cooperative going through something like that. Um, and like I said, man, I just, I just attribute it to um, adrenaline, 
and a high pain tolerance, man. Um, so you did feel the pain, for sure? I felt something. I didn't know exactly what it was because I still had my helmet on. Okay. And, um, and like I said, I was laying on my stomach. Thank so God you had a helmet on. Yeah, so I couldn't see. Um, and then my, my shoulder was dislocated, my elbow was messed up, so I couldn't really move the top part of my body because it, it was, I was in pain. But I didn't know what was going on with my leg because I couldn't feel it. I thought maybe it was just broke. Or, you couldn't feel either leg or did you feel one just, of it? I just couldn't feel. Oh, that one, okay. Yeah, my left leg. And um, shoot, man. I got to the hospital. When I, well, when I woke up in the hospital, I had tubes and stuff down my throat, braces on my neck. Uh, yeah, and um, that's when I, when I realized, man, that I had lost my lower leg. Man, what was that first thought when they first told you you lost your leg, bro? That's a, that's a, that's, cause you didn't know, like, you, you waking up, you don't really know what's going on. They say, oh, you lost your leg. Like, how, what was, like, you like, I'm glad to be alive. You like, what? I lost my leg. What, are you serious? Or you like, yeah, it was uh, a bunch of emotions, basically. Yeah, it's a bunch of emotions. Uh, what, what you know, I was wondering what my quality of life would be like afterwards. Um, I was wondering what I would and would not be able to do. Um, you know, insecurities and questioning my manhood. It was it was a lot, man. You know, it was a lot. And uh, like I said, I'm I'm just now six months in. Um, and uh, it's still, you know, it's still hard at times, but we got to press on, you know. And going back, uh, we talked about me having on a helmet. I encourage any motorcycle rider, wear your gear, gloves, a good helmet, DOT approved helmet, uh, jackets, jeans, whatever you need to wear to protect yourself, please wear it. All right, now let's continue with that. So what what can then prevent you from losing your leg? No gear. Um, man, you know it's crazy you say that because uh, the week before I had bought a new pair of motorcycle shoes, and the top of the shoe, I didn't I didn't get the the tall ones, the long ones like I was going to because they was like a hundred and thirty dollars more than the ones I was gonna get. So I was like, man, I just get these later, and. Where my where my leg was injured at was right above where that shoe stopped at. Yeah, so who's to say if I had to got those? But I can't I can't dwell on that though. If I had right, to, right, 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 right. I'm just saying like for the people who ride in, in the future, like oh yeah, man. is there anything Ankles, that could be ankle support? Uh, if you fall and protect your hands, uh, of course, you know your, your, your head. You definitely want to protect your head. Um, yeah, man. You know, wear your gear. Wear your gear. And um, would you ride again? Definitely. So I you, can't wait. So you gonna ride again? <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> and I know that uh, it's gonna it's some people out there that's that's gonna see this and shake their head. But once it's in you, man, it's in you, and it's definitely in me. I would only imagine. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So you you're part of a bike club. Or no? No, we're not a we're not a club. We're just a, a tight knit group of friends that got each other back and like to ride motorcycles. Yeah, and I can't I can't wait to get it back out there with them. And I'm gonna go ahead and apologize to my aunt, my sister, and my grandma because I'm definitely getting another bike. Definitely. They don't want you to ride. No. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I mean, as long as you safe driver, I mean. There's more people die in car accident probably. Right. Well, I... Uh, well, I can't say that. Yeah, that's that's a statistic I can't speak on. Okay. But... But you know the statistics. Right. I mean, it's, yeah, people's... Motorcycles are dangerous. They are. And just like what happened to me, it wasn't my fault. Somebody did that too. Um, you can't drive for people. Right. If I was out, you know, doing stunts and popping wheelers and I lost control, then that would be different. But somebody... Uh, somebody else's negligence and uh, habits caused me to lose my leg. It wasn't any fault of mine. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely riding again. 
So you feel like it's going to affect your dating life? You feel like it's going to affect now that you are, you know, uh, I, I heard your thoughts before when you first told you were thinking about some manhood, this and this and that. But now that you got to let you move around a little more, you, you drive, you do all that. So what can't you Hold do? Up, time out. Let's go back to that manhood comment. Okay. It don't, it, it, <laughs> we rolling, huh? We still rolling. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to keep it clean. Okay. Uh, when I said, it, you know, I was questioning my manhood. Let them know what's going on. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let them know what you, okay. I, I meant, um, I meant to the point of, of, of doing, you know, masculine things like uh, cutting the grass and washing cars and going to work. That manhood, the other manhood is is perfectly intact. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So yeah, that's a good message for that man. Cause you know you might got somebody who like you and wondering. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let them know, man. Yeah. So you still can basically do everything you could do before, but at a you got to work it just a tad. It might be a little harder. You yeah, know, yeah, you know, you got to get slower. used to it. Yeah, a little bit slower. Um, I got to move with a little bit more caution now. Um, my arm is still not healed up, so it's still not healed up all the way. Um, matter of fact, let me turn because I'm supposed to have my brace on. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, But yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a process, man. It's, it's a very slow process, uh, but I'm going to stick it out to the end, you know. All right, man. So when when you start back DJing, you already started back? I already have, man. Um, um, yeah, I've started, I've started back already, man. Um, Shoot, I, was, I actually did two events when I was still in the wheelchair. But you had somebody else helping you? Yeah. I did. Okay, okay. I did. I mean, okay. Yeah, you can't, can't hold me down, man. It, you know, it uh, slowed me up. It's not holding me down. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, uh, man, I think we about wrapped up, man. Uh, people know you start back DJing. That's good. You basically, starting back at life again. You know, uh, Anything else you want to let people know, like, um, I know you already don't thank them or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you told us about your nonprofit you starting, mm -hmm. so you're going to let us know when that jump off. Most definitely. Just be on the lookout for a nonprofit. Um, I don't know when for sure, but I know that it is going to happen. You know, um, if it's in the most highest will, then. That's, that's where I, I got a message, man. I got a message, and I have um, an assignment. And right now I'm on assignment. You know, so. so the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come.